Hey guys, welcome back to another creepy video. So today I'm doing a queen video for the first time in a million years. Um, I feel like this always happens, so apologies to all my queen fan followers. But since the queen movie's coming out, expect some more queen videos. So today is actually um, a subliminal message and it's all about one song. And as you can tell, that song is called The Fairy Feller's Masterstroke, which is a really awesome queen song. It's from Queen's second album. If you haven't heard it, I please listen to it because it's amazing. I have so many notes about this song written down. The Fairy Feller's Masterstroke is actually the name of a painting, I believe an oil painting, and it was done by a man named Richard Dad. Richard Dad was a very different person. And personally, I don't know much about art. Artists, usually they look at a painting and they just get what's happening and me, like, no. I just, I've never been that type of person. I don't know what it is about artists, but it's like some of the best artists have had the worst childhoods, the worst lives. Just so many bad things have happened to them. They're literally miserable. They are tortured by their mental state or by physical things that happen to them. It's crazy and they bring it out in their drawings and their art and it is beautiful, but at the same time it's pretty messed up. Some of the stuff that these artists go through. And Richard Dad was no exception. So Richard Dad basically, he painted fairy yeah, he literally would just paint fairies. And then somewhere along the way, he struggled with mental illness, and I mean struggled with mental illness. So just to kind of explain where this man's mental mindset was, he painted this certain painting. It lasted from 1855 to 1864, which is nine years, so that's a very long time. It says that while he was in prison, in a state criminal lunatic asylum. He was confined there for a very long time after murdering his own father. Aside from killing his own father, he actually had a lot of bad, violent history, and I would just assume that's because of his mental state. Maybe even things he went through as a child, there's really not much on him as a child, but he would like threaten people with razors, like he it was dark, okay? So moving on to the actual painting itself, I just think this is very interesting. I've always wanted to know what the song is about because again, I'm just not artistic, so I don't really know many paintings or many artists' names. But the fact that a Queen song was written about this, of course, I had to look into it. So if you look in the middle of the painting, there is a person with an ax, and you see there's something like, it looks kind of like a nut sitting on the ground and it looks like this man is taking an axe and he's about to hit this nut. So basically the man that is going to hit this nut with an axe is a fairy feller, which basically is like a fairy fellow. He's a dude. They just said feller during that time. I don't really know why. That was just the vocabulary of the time. And he's trying to crack a hazelnut. That's what that is. That's a hazelnut. He's trying to crack a hazelnut with an axe for Queen Mab. Queen Mab was a tiny fairy that was actually in Romeo and Juliet. And the coach that she rides in or the little carriage that she would like to ride in was actually made out of an empty hazelnut. Assuming that he cracks the hazelnut, it would be empty and it would be kind of like a shell for her carriage. And that the legs of the carriage, you call them spokes and basically if you look at a wheel and there's like little rods on the inside, those are called spokes. Basically those were made out of spider legs, so that's exciting. Throughout this picture there's just a whole lot going on, you know, but that's the main Point. From what I've seen after researching this, most artists put what they're really trying to draw attention to in the very middle. That's a big reason why the name of it has Fairy Feller in it, because it's focusing on that person. Outside of the Fairy Feller and the Hazelnut and the Fairy, there's a Fairy Band and they are holding instruments. They're just scattered throughout the painting and it looks like they're anticipating him cracking the Hazelnut with his axe. And I can't remember the exact word for this, but the basic definition of it, typically they're the male head of the fairy family or they're the head of a church or a tribe and this person is wearing a triple crown kind of like the Pope. This is another thing going back to dad's very violent behavior he went through through his whole life. Dad actually met the Pope in Rome in 1843 and he remembers out of everything he could remember about meeting the Pope. He remembers that he wanted to attack him. Then we have dad's father, which I kind of didn't research as much on his relationship with his dad, but I mean, he ultimately killed his own father, so I'm imagining that the relationship was not very great. His father is portrayed, it's literally a portrait of his father in the top right corner of the painting, and he's holding a type of gun that was used from the time and a heavy tool known as a pestle. Not a pistol, but a pestle. This part, I'm really not sure 
what this could mean because maybe it means his father was also violent. I feel like this is one part that I personally, after I film this video, would like to research more into. But what I read on the website, I don't really fully understand. It says that all of the items that represented his father, items surrounding his father, the items his father was holding, represent a game of a childhood fortune teller game. The only thing I can really guess about the fortune teller game is the reason it's a child fortune teller's game is because he probably had no idea what his fortune or destiny would be growing up because I think it's safe to imagine that his father wasn't the best person to him. Oftentimes, you know, people are the way they are because of how they were raised. So maybe the fortune teller game as a child just has to do with not knowing his own destiny or fate because of the childhood he was living. Going back to the male head of the church, whoever this person is, looks like they're telling the fairy feller to stop. I feel like he is living a life of doing things his way, whether it's right or wrong, and people that are of higher authority are telling him to stop and telling him to not do the things that he's doing. But another side of the painting is just, it's kind of there, and I guess this is just the inside of his mind, just how his mind is working, and it actually involves some sexual things. There are two fairies pictured in the bottom left corner, and they're more curvy than most of the people on there, and it's made pretty obvious through the drawing that that was intentional, and they're being stared at by this person. I don't really know what this could mean in Dad's life. I mean, maybe that's his own desires coming out into his painting. Not really sure, but either way, that was something I noticed, just them getting stared down. And also, aside from this painting, there's actually a poem on the back of the painting that he wrote, and it's really, really beautiful, and I will put it in the description if you want to read it, but it kind of just summarizes the painting. It is a little harder to read, in my opinion, but the Queen song is kind of just an overall summary of this painting. And I find it interesting that Freddie picked this painting out of all paintings. I feel like, if anything, Freddie picked this because I... I feel like it's very relatable. I mean, Freddy, I feel like his whole life felt could relate somehow to Richard Dad. They're both very different people, but they both have their own struggles. I don't feel that Freddy's was mental illness, but he had struggles, whether that be... I guess trying to understand why Freddy picked this painting of all paintings he could pick is that they both had very similar struggles, just in very different ways. Like, obviously, Freddy wasn't, as far as we all know a very violent person but as far as trying to control a higher power i feel like freddy was limitless and would always try to break boundaries at every chance he could get and so did richard dad and i feel like freddy really respected that and respected dad's art and this is kind of my whole take on this this is more of a me personal kind of thing but i feel like freddy was just extremely fascinated with someone who had such a violent life but the same time would paint fairies like is that freddy or is that freddy like he was a man of extremes and painting fairies and killing your dad is like pretty extreme and i just thought that that like kind of made me chuckle and just it's such a freddy thing i don't know not really killing your dad but like Thank you guys for watching. I know this video wasn't super, super creepy, but I just find things like this very interesting. I love learning about things I don't really know about. I feel like I don't do that as much anymore since I've been out of school. I do have a shout out this week and it is Shannon with a peace sign on Snapchat. And she just says, hey Ashley, so I've just started my own channel. I have been waiting to do this for so long. If you could watch and if you like, Please give me a shout out if you can, it would mean so much. I hope you like it. I did watch her video and it's hilarious. It is a messy, drunk best friend challenge, not tag, challenge. I'll put the link to her video in the description. Please subscribe to her. I can tell that she really enjoys making YouTube videos. Anyways, um, I'm gonna go now. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with another Michael video next week. Bye guys.